Okay, so since we're gonna be deleting the EGR, which is this section here, we have this part, which is a genuine Toyota part. Uh, it comes off the 1HD uh, engine. So you can actually order it off Toyota if you want. And you can actually do the same thing what I'm doing. You just have to be aware of deleting EGRs on a car which has an EGR system is not legal according to Australian law or whatever state you're in. You could be in the US or whatever else. So check with your local authorities. I only recommend doing this for off-road purposes. Um, so if you do it on road, it's at your own risk. Uh, even putting an EGR block on without doing the EGR delete is actually illegal because it the whole reason why you have an EGR system is for emissions purposes. Uh, so do it at your own risk. Uh, so once that's, now that that's over, let's pull off these sensors, pull this apart so we can actually clean it and uh, put in the delete kit. We're gonna need a ratchet with a size 10, size 12 and size eight socket. Uh, you can also use a size 12 or a 10 ratchet spanner or a spanner if you have one. Uh, whatever helps you pull this thing apart. So let's start off with a 12. Again, make sure you remember where everything goes. As your life's gonna be a living hell afterwards trying to figure it all out. But lucky you got this video to look at. Should we leave that on? Now half this stuff is not going to really work anymore because we're doing the EGR delete. So we'll, I'll put it back on and we'll, we'll start the car and see if it pops up any error codes without anything plugged in. If it does pop up an error code then we'll just put everything back on, plug it in, but we'll just block near the vacuum hoses. That way it won't come up with any errors. Now this mechanism here, this is used for when you're turning the car off. So when you turn the when you turn the ignition off, this closes and stops any air going into the intake of your car and causes the car to engine to stop more uh, less rough. So with the 1HZs, when you turn off the car, you can feel the whole car shake around. Whereas the 1HD FTEs, this, uh, when you turn off the engine, it's a lot smoother. And that's because of this. So the little butterfly clo valve closes inside. In there, so it closes up when you turn the car off. And then after a few seconds, you can actually hear this open back up. But say if you put a, uh, a front mount intercooler on, you'd be bypassing or, and yeah, and you had it where you had a, a custom intake on your uh, intake manifold, you would bypass all this. And that would just mean that your, uh, when you turn your car off, it'll just shut down a little bit rougher. See, that's, that's your heating element for uh, winter countries. But we live in Australia where it's very hot, so this is actually very useless to us. And it's, and it's a huge air restriction. So if you're going big boost and whatever else, I'd recommend cutting that out, <laughs> or you can actually get delete kits like this. If you are interested and you can't find one, I can actually design one and get them made up. Same as the EGR block, I've already made designs for the EGR block. If I get enough interest, I'll order them and I can send them out to you. But if you're interested in these as well, let me know and I'll draw up a design in CAD and uh, see where we can go from there. There is a bit of oil in there.
So another way of doing this is getting a size 12 spanner, getting another spanner. That way it gives you a lot more leverage. Easier to undo. Remember to put this bracket back on so it's up the top where the arrow is. Pull that off. And that is your EGR. So what it does is a vacuum or pressure gets pushed into here or a vacuum gets pushed in, which opens up this valve, which lets exhaust back into the intake and then all that crap goes back into your intake. So we're getting rid of that and we're installing this. Pretty easy. So this end is a lot cleaner because it's just taking the air, the air slash oil before the EGR. And this place is just messed up because of the EGR. So I'm not sure if you can see that section there. Look at that. That's all the way through your intake. So let's get these things into the part washer and give them a clean. But before that, let's pull this this sensor off so we don't damage it. Undo this sensor, you're going to need a size 22 spinner. In the vise it goes. Just make sure when you put it in the vise, don't clamp it too hard. Just enough so it can't wiggle around. Because it is only alloy. Take these parts, put them in the part washer. So now the part water washer is set up. We have a uh, half our parts inside to clean. Let's actually give this liquid Molly spray a go. Does a good job of degreasing. So we've waited a few minutes uh, to see what this stuff does, and it has started to break it down a bit. But uh, I don't know how well that will go about actually cleaning your intake while it's on the car. But uh, when when you're cleaning this soot out of your intake, make sure you wear gloves any type of glove you have because this stuff will stain your skin and it's very very hard to get off so in here we have very strong part cleaner so i have to wear gloves as well otherwise it will burn the skin i got one of these suckers little bottle cleaners or whatever you want to call them from two dollar shop so we'll use that dig it in there and wow clean it all out it might be worth putting on um, some safety glasses as well because it's probably going to flick everywhere. It's looking a lot better than it did. You can actually see metal. It's not black and cruddy. But this end is still coated. So, should be fun. You can't even see it on the camera, that's how dark it is. It's like a black hole. So, let's fill it up. If you are doing this at home, make sure you don't do it in the laundry, or your missus will kill you. Or wear white. This. this will stain white. As you can 
see all the gunky stuff's all gone now. Most of the tar has come off. I'm, I'm happy with putting that back on as is. Another way of cleaning is scotch bright. You have a few little stains in there. That seems to pull it off really good as well. There you go. Yeah, so no need to worry about any heavier stuff. So if you want to polish off the inside, get a little bit of a scotch bright, even just your normal dishes one, the green one, that's fine for Woolies. This is actually uh, like a spray paint is red scotch bright or maroon scotch bright it's called. So it's used to uh, scuff up the paint for base coat. Should underneath some water. Rinse off all the chemicals and then blow it off so it blow it off dry. And now just blow them off with some air or leave them in the sun to dry. Okay. That's all we need to do. Now that we've finished cleaning these two, let's actually put it together. So let's take all the shiny new parts. So our EGR delete. And our old EGR. Get your, uh, oop, your old metal gaskets. So just give it a quick wipe. Put that on. The other one. Okay. Slide that on. Here are the gasket. And we get this end. Shove it on. And you're finished. Time to go home. No, only if it was that easy. Don't forget the arrow. So you have to throw that back on over the arrow side. Remember arrow bracket. Let's tighten all those up. Remember don't do it too tight. All alloy. The bolt's probably steel, but they're connected into alloy housing, so you don't want to spit it off. I'm going to put this sensor back in. Clean off some of that excess oil we had on there. Make sure you don't lose the copper washer, need that on there so you make a good seal, it goes in this end, pop it in, remember 22, 22 spanner or a deep socket if you got one, and just give it a little bit of a turn, don't forget again it's alloy, not too tight, plus the copper washer will Seal it up in there for you. Careful with these edges, they're very cheap, pretty sharp. There's your gasket. Clean off that oil. And be very careful. The gasket, you don't want to push too hard. As you pull off this black coating. It's got a little tab. Make sure the tab goes to the tab. So you have a tab. Here's the tab. Okay. Let's 
So that's what an intake looks like when you put an EGR delete on. Like I said before, you can delete this part as well. This here. So in Europe, in cold climate places, who have actual snow winters, keep that on. Anyone who's like us in Australia or South Africa or something, delete that because we do not need it. It's way too hot here. Unless you're in uh, the Blue Mountains here in Australia, then maybe leave it on. But 99% of the time you won't need it here in Australia. Uh, sensors we'll leave off, but this one, we need this one here. Uh, the rest we'll try and get, oh, and your other sensor. Uh, the rest we'll try and get away without in installing because that's all the other ones are for the EGR system so we'll see if we can get away with it but I'll just clean this up because this we have to put on otherwise we'll get bluest leaking everywhere pop that on There is a little trick we can do. The owner of the car said that this was popping off all the time, so what we can do is just put a little zippy tie here on the other one. And that'll just grip it enough until he has time to grab a new one of these filters. And that will keep them going for a little while. Okay, so here's our tiny little zippy ties. Throw that on there. That should help you just get enough friction on that. So it's less likely to pop off on you. That way. So I won't do it tight all the way because we have to realign this hole. So just finger tight so you can still spit it around. We'll see if we have to put sensors on any of these, we'll do it on the car.